Um. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A freak accident sends a semi truck smashing into someone's house. I would have been underneath the rear front, the rear tire on the right side of the cab. Tonight, the owner of this decimated home knows how lucky he is to have been somewhere else. And he's not the only one who avoided trouble. A Sterling Heights family heard an explosion in the distance. Then 15 seconds later, a huge crash at their front door. Topping our news at 11, two dangerous accidents no one could have seen coming, both happening though in Macomb County. Let's start in Sterling Heights where a family with two young daughters, thankful they were in the front of their home and not the back when a piece of metal came flying into the back door wall. Our Mara McDonald is live near Mound and 17 Mile and Mara, uh, Mara Sterling Heights Police. They got out there pretty fast. The fire department did too. Kimberly, they sure did. And this all started here in this industrial park where you have a guy working with a blowtorch. You hear a boom, then a projectile is in the air. Do you see the wall back there? That projectile goes beyond the wall and into the neighborhood behind it. The chaperones love their backyard with its water feature and expansive deck. Usually they'd be out here enjoying the day with their girls. It's riding up. Today, thank goodness, they were inside. We heard a big explosion and we just kind of looked at each other like, what was that? That sounded like it was right by our house. Seconds later, we definitely heard something hit the house right after the explosion. It was like 10 seconds afterwards, but we weren't sure what it was and I was kind of afraid to come by the window. It looks like a giant metal clam that hit the deck so hard it smashed in some of the wood and then shattered the rear door wall. I slowly creeped over and I looked and I seen the uh, hunk of metal. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Whoa is right. Turns out someone at a nearby business was using a blowtorch on a metal barrel and it exploded, hurtling the top through the air and right into the chaperone's home. Luckily, nobody was hurt. I definitely feel lucky that it, we weren't outside because it is a nice day today and we could have been out here with our dogs and little children. Back here live, Sterling Heights Fire was out here at the business making sure that the guy with the blowtorch was okay. They say he has an injured hand but is otherwise going to be okay. Meanwhile, the owner here has already called the chaperones to apologize for that flying barrel lid and says his insurance will take care of all the damage. We're live in Sterling Heights tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Good to hear and so glad that nobody got hurt. All right, Mara. Devin. Now you saw the aftermath on Local 4 News at 5 of a house along 26 Mile Macomb Township that was reduced to rubble by a semi truck that had blown a tire. Well, tonight the cleanup is underway. It has been fraught with difficulty. And we're also hearing from the owner of the home who got a look at just how bad it is. Jermont Terry live along 26 Mile near Omo, just east of North Avenue. And Jermont, they're having trouble getting the semi removed still. They are, Devin. That's because there are thousands of pounds of asphalt in the bed of this truck. And you can see right now it's still sitting where it ended and landed and they're trying to empty everything out. But keep this in mind for the man who lived here. Deputy showed up to his job telling him a semi hit the house, but he didn't think there would be nothing left of his house. 26 mile in Omo becomes the corner. Everyone in Macomb Township is looking at and talking about. I heard a very loud sound like a bomb. The sounds of the semi losing control and ending up like this. After a tire blows on the rig, the semi hits two vehicles before crashing, or should we say pushing Chuck Van Fleathering's house off its foundation. I was really surprised there wasn't a big plume of smoke. Chuck moved in two years ago. He just finished remodeling and now this. Absolute awe, the humanity of it, you know, because one moment you have everything, I have nowhere to spend the night. There's nothing left of the place he cherished. Where do you go from here, Chuck? I have no clue. Thankfully, Chuck wasn't home when the semi carrying thousands of pounds of asphalt came crashing through. Looking at my furniture, I would have been underneath the rear front, the rear tire on the right side of the cab because he pushed everything into the cemetery Everything he worked for destroyed and possibly sentimental items gone too. I just brought a bunch of pictures of my kids in from the garage. Chuck keeps a good sense of humor while watching the crews try to remove the semi on top of his house. 
Well, I got insurance and it looks like I got a good deal on the insulation because it's all over the place. And tonight you can see that they are still working to empty the trailer and you are looking right now at the actual rig that the truck driver was in. Thankfully, again, everyone walked away from this crash on, you know, not seriously injured, I should say. And we should, that also includes the two cars that this semi driver ran into. A uh, miraculous situation out here, considering the devastation that's out here as well. Reporting live in Macomb Township, Jermont Terry, Local 4. I know they're still trying to figure a lot out, Jermont, but any, any suspicion here among investigators that there was something, well, suspicious with the crash? Devin, no, it's not. Uh, apparently, uh, the Sheriff's Department is saying they don't suspect drugs, alcohol as a factor in this. It's just that tire blue on this two-lane highway, yep. and this is simply the aftermath of it. Man, oh, man. All right, Jermont. Customers at a gas station caught in a scary situation when a clerk shoots a would-be robber. The Macomb County Sheriff's Department says the clerk inside the mobile gas station shot the masked man who came inside demanding money from customers. Witnesses say it was a tense situation. I ran to the window and seen the clerk running out the door and with the gun in his hand and pointed down to the ground yelling, don't move, don't move. I don't know, they say they may have been a couple shots around by my truck because they're holding my truck right now. And I gotta wait for them to release my truck. No one else was hurt. The gunman was taken to a nearby hospital. His condition is not known. Tonight, President Trump taking some credit for a drop in opioid prescriptions, but the CDC says doctors might actually be going too far in restricting the painkillers. President declaring his commitment to end the opioid crisis at a summit for experts who work to fight drug abuse and addiction. The focus is on big pharmaceutical companies and fentanyl shipments from China. The president says his administration has put a dent in painkiller prescriptions. Already during my time in office, we have reduced the total amount of opioid prescribed by 34 percent. That's a pretty amazing number. Now, meanwhile, chronic pain, pain patients say they're the victims of an overreaction to the opioid crisis. And believe it or not, the CDC agrees. The feds say some doctors are misinterpreting guidelines and setting hard limits or cutting off patients from the painkillers. Instead, they're advising doctors to carefully justify opioid prescriptions and dosages. Vice President Mike Pence was in town today visiting multiple cities across Metro Detroit. The VP made a stop at Ford's Dearborn assembly plant where he met with top auto officials to discuss the importance of growing the auto industry and to praise the renegotiated NAFTA deal. We got lots of other issues that Washington spends its tie on. This is about jobs. This is about growth. This is about making sure that there's more investment in America, more growth in manufacturing in particular, more growth in the American automotive industry. The vice president also praised the plant expansion among the big three. In addition to Dearborn, he visited uh, Detroit and made stop, a stop in Taylor as well. A man is arrested in Lapeer County for the sexual assault of a child, and investigators fear it may not be an isolated incident. Police say Frank Green was staying at a relative's house in Columbiaville, Michigan, and was watching that relative's child while they were away. Well, a person sent a check on the child, saw or heard something suspicious in the home, reported it to police, and they arrested Green on Monday. He's charged with criminal sexual conduct and accosting a child. Green lived in Georgia and several other states before moving here last summer. If you've got any information on the case or know anything about any others uh, involving Frank Green, you are urged to contact the Lapeer County Sheriff's Office. A Michigan lawmaker says it's time to change one of the most recognizable logos we see in almost every building. We'll show you what he hopes can replace it. Also, how much screen time is too much for the youngest children. The World Health Organization is taking a stand when it comes to babies and toddlers on that issue. We've got that coming up too. Here comes Ben. Devin, waking up to freezing temperatures this morning was pretty much a non-starter for a lot of folks, so that looks better, mid 40s, but we do have rain on the way. We'll talk about that and some changes to the weekend forecast all ahead. He served under two presidents and a Supreme Court justice. Now he's working for you and dealing with the state's biggest problems from child abuse to opioids. The new director of the Health and Human Services Department's priorities and his unique qualifications for the job. That's next. 
Most of us will do anything to protect our pets, but is pet insurance a good investment? We'll take a look at it and talk with the experts. Help me hang tomorrow starting at 6 a.m. Step of the way. The measles outbreak, the opioid crisis, and children in foster care. This man is tasked with directing the largest department in Michigan's government and the many challenges it faces. We need to listen carefully and we need empathy, deep empathy. But that also needs to be informed by data and evidence. In good health, Robert Gordon is the new director of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, appointed by Governor Whitmer. His resume includes working for two presidents and a Supreme Court justice. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge sat down with him to talk about his priorities for the department and the unique set of qualifications that he brings to the table here, Doc. Yeah, Devin and Kimberly, he's really very interesting. You know, it's the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's the human services part that really expands the scope into areas like foster care, adult and child protective services, safety net public assistance benefits, and even the administration of child support. I spent a lot of time early in my career uh, working in communities. Um, my first job out of law school was representing kids in foster care. Early experiences like that and clerking for Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg shaped his future. She is an amazing justice and she was a wonderful boss. She's that kind of engaged uh, uh, leader, but she's also a deeply caring person who has a birthday cake and sings happy birthday for every one of her clerks every year. Ah, did she sing happy birthday for you? She absolutely did. In short order, he found himself in the public policy sector. One of my first jobs was in the in the Clinton years, I helped set up the AmeriCorps program, the National Service Program. Eventually continuing on under a different administration. And I worked in the Obama administration. I did a lot around home visiting programs and teen pregnancy prevention programs and early childhood education and just was very passionate about doing all that I could to bring resources to programs that work for kids. So when he was tapped for this position, he couldn't say no. When I met with Governor Whitmer and had the opportunity to come here, I, I thought it was truly the opportunity of a lifetime to have impact on a scale um, uh, and in communities like I had never had before. So I'm thrilled, thrilled to be here. What are the priorities as you see them in your department right now? I will name three. I could name ten, but I'll just name three big ones. Um, the first is that we deliver services um, as effectively as possible and that we meet people where they are. Second big priority uh, is in our children's services. We're 14,000 children in foster care in Michigan. Um, we have enormous responsibilities to those kids. The third thing I would say is we have uh, uh, changes to the Healthy Michigan plan coming. You know, Medicaid expansion it was a bipartisan effort here in Michigan. Great credit to Republicans and Democrats. 680,000 people who have health insurance because of that. Now I have to tell you, after meeting him, the thing that really stood out is his genuine interest in listening to the people that his decisions will affect and the real interest in reducing disparities of all types in health and the other services that are being delivered by his department. Yeah, what a time to come into the job. Really interesting. And very busy week for you, isn't it? Yeah, no doubt about it. In fact, here's what I'm working on for tomorrow at 5. A local hospital system is trying to reduce the risk of opioid addiction and help patients battling chronic pain. It's similar to keeping a, an armed weapon in, in, in the reach of your children. You know, I think these are deadly medications. Uh, they are addictive medications. So we have a free community event, and it's really to educate people about a non-opioid approach to managing pain. Tomorrow at 5, see how you can help fight the opioid crisis and learn about options to ease pain in a safer way. All right, so let's all get a plan together on how we're going to welcome Kimberly back on her return to the news desk and Ben said no I'm going to Ann Arbor. I know. So I'm uh, glad you're I'm back still tonight. Upset we got about our that. wires crossed. <laughs> That's what it was. You know we ran into a lot of good people out there. Yeah, you a lot of crowd. kids. They're always a big hit. People. That's right. Yeah, really we had like two rollerbladers and a chihuahua named April. <laughs> so they came it was, to get weather radios? Yeah absolutely. <laughs>
It was, <laughs> she was phenomenal and she was very well behaved. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, clouds and radar right now. We've got two areas of rain that we're watching. This is cold front and then we've got a low pressure center uh, that's a little bit closer to the Ohio Valley. Most of the moisture is down here. We're going to get something off of both of those systems, but this is going to be the first one that sort of brushes the area. Even though we've got some return showing up in southwest Michigan right now, it still looks like it's going to be closer to midday tomorrow before we see some appreciable sprinkles. It's still going to be light stuff when it does show up. 51, mostly cloudy. We've got a very light wind out there, so winds are not going to be an issue tonight. Temperatures are already into the 40s here across the north zone, still holding on to the low 50s uh, in our west and south zone. 50 out in Ann Arbor as well. We got uh, one of our storm pins in that goose looks very determined to go somewhere. I'm not sure <laughs> sure where he's going, but uh, this is out from uh, St. Clair Shores and uh, some beautiful sunshine earlier today. There did see some of it. Uh, those high clouds were kind of around for most of the day, and we're expecting to see more of the clouds tomorrow. There's a little bit of that light rain that's coming in off that first system to the south. Then as we get into the nighttime hours going into Friday morning, a little bit more of a con uh, contribution from that uh, cold front to the north. Still, most of this stuff is going to be gone by about 9 a.m. on Friday. Then we'll be dry for most of the day. Get some late sunshine. That looks good for the weekend, but we've got a system that's going to be in here Saturday night going into Sunday morning. So the two day stretch, not completely dry, but it does like we're, uh, we're going to focus most of that rain in the nighttime hours. So hopefully the daytime uh, we'll be able to enjoy 44 tonight for the overnight low clouds increasing late as uh, we head towards daybreak tomorrow and not going to see a whole lot in the way of sunshine. That's what makes these numbers all that more impressive. 65 is what we've got out in Dearborn for highs tomorrow. 62 in the city officially will hit 65 in Romulus South Zone. I don't think we'll get to 70 degrees, but we will see a lot of 60s tomorrow. A little bit cooler towards the lakes Monroe and Luna Pier with highs in the mid 50s. West Zone, you start seeing these numbers get a little bit cooler, but uh, Flint, one of the uh, warm spots tomorrow, 68. And in our north zone tomorrow, we're looking at high temperatures anywhere between 67, 68, maybe as cool as 60 up in Lexington tomorrow afternoon. And that's as good as it gets. Mid 50s for highs both Saturday and Sunday. We start recovering towards the middle of next week. Not a ton of rain in there, uh, but we're going to see some drops here and there. But uh, Mother Nature's already done some work. There's a lot of green <laughs> stuff out there. It's just starting yeah. to happen again. Yeah, yeah that looks okay. good. All right, uh, still ahead. What world health experts are now saying about how much screen time the smallest children those less than two years of age should get next. An investigation is underway at Pontiac High School after a female student claims she was sexually assaulted by a male student. The school immediately contacted the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. The student accused of committing the crime is currently in juvenile detention pending charges. Neighbors in Madison Heights are fighting to save the life of Boomer the Pitbull. Boomer was placed on death row for allegedly killing a Chihuahua. Supporters, however, claim there's no evidence showing Boomer committed the crime. Billboards have gone up advocating for Boomer, whose case is now heading to the State Court of Appeals. Ford is investing a half a billion dollars, 500 million into Plymouth Township electric car startup Rivian. Ford plans to use Rivian's platform to build a line of Ford branded electric vehicles. Experts believe Ford will begin with a fleet of electric commercial vehicles before transitioning to consumer cars. A Michigan lawmaker is proposing new accessibility signs and hopes to better portray those with disabilities. State Representative Bo Lefebvre from the UP says the new signs would show active independence as opposed to helplessness. According to Lefebvre, the sign change would not cost taxpayers or businesses a dime. New York and Connecticut have already adopted similar laws. His new proposal would also take steps to remove the term handicap from signs and communications at state and local levels. Good health tonight. The World Health Organization releasing new guidelines urging parents to limit the amount of screen time for very young children. Experts recommend toddlers under the age of two should not spend any time in front of screens. Children between the ages of two and four should be limited to an hour of screen time a day. The organization encourages at least three hours of physical activity for infants and young children. A number of studies have linked lesser screen time to better brain function and overall health benefits. Yeah. Not bad in for information for anyone who might be, say, a new mom. That's we true. Know any? Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you know, it's it's funny you say that because at three months old, Basil, if I'm feeding him and I have my phone in my uh -huh, hand, uh -huh. he's already I'm peeking looking. over there looking. That's right. Well, that oh, look, they're showing the picture again. You guys stop it. <laughs> That's how he's going to see you right now, right? He's got to be watching a little he's, bit to see He's probably up right now. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, well, he'll wait up for you. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, it, it is great. About four in the morning. Great to Thank have you. Exactly. Yeah, great Thank seeing you. you. Thank you. All right, well, anyway, we'll talk about the Tigers. Uh, Blake Griffin underwent surgery today for that knee. We'll tell you about that in a little bit. We call Born to Run. Come on back.